I understand that state law currently requires that the following announcement be made at the beginning of every public remote hearing as follows. Due to the current public health emergency, city council committees are currently meeting remotely. We are using Microsoft Teams to make these remote hearings possible. Instructions for how the public may view and offer public testimony uh, at public hearings of council committees are included in the public hearing notices that are published in the Daily News, Inquirer, and Legal Intelligence Year prior to the hearings and can also be found on phlcouncil.com. I now note that the hour has come and clerk, will you please call the roll to take attendance? Members that are in attendance will please indicate that you are present when your name is called. And also please say a few brief words when responding so that your image will be displayed on screen when you speak. Madam Clerk. Council Member Gauthier. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, everyone. Happy to be here today. Council Member Quinona Sanchez. Council Member Johnson. Council Member Thomas. Good morning, President. Council Member Jones. Good morning, Madam Chair, members, and viewing audience. Council Member Brooks. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, guests. Good morning, Philadelphia. And Chair Bass. Thank you. A quorum of the committee is present and this hearing is now called to order. This is the public hearing of the Committee on Parks, Recreation and Cultural Affairs regarding bill number 200617. Madam Clerk, will you please read the title of the bill? Authorizing an initial, an initial 10 year conversion of the current term with up to two five year renewal terms for a lease agreement the city has entered into with the first T of Greater Philadelphia for operating, managing and maintaining the John F. Byrne golf course all under certain terms and conditions. Thank you. Before we begin to hear testimony from the witnesses we have for today, everyone who has been invited to the meeting to testify should be aware that this public hearing is being recorded. Because the hearing is public, participants and viewers have no reasonable expectation of privacy. By continuing to be in the meeting, you are consenting to being recorded. Additionally, prior to recognizing members for the questions or comments they have for witnesses, I will note that for the record at this time that we will use the chat feature available in Microsoft Teams to allow members to signify that they wish to be recognized. In order to comply with the Sunshine Act, the chat feature must only be used for that purpose. Madam Clerk, will you please call the first panel of, of witnesses uh, we have to testify this morning? William Heineman V, Executive Director of the First Tee of Greater Philadelphia, followed by Catherine Ott Lovell, Commissioner of the Department of Parks and Recreation. Good morning. And please state your name for the record and begin with your testimony. Good morning, William Heinman from the First Tee of Greater Philadelphia. And we're gonna start with a 60 second video. Okay. I'm not sure if the volume is playing on that. It looks like we have some slight technical difficulties. Uh, okay. You want well, to I'll, <laughs> yeah, we had we had tested it uh, and it worked, but um, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, and that was a video of our students, um, and there's there words speak volumes um, and they're much better spoke people than I am. That's why I had a clip of them. But I want to give you a quick background. The first T 
is a youth development organization who serves 30,000 kids and aims to set each up for success to deal with life's challenges. 55% of our students are diverse and 40% are female. 100% of our kids who complete our program graduate high school. We help at no cost over 38 schools in the Philadelphia School District. First Tee is not a golf organization or a golf course management company. However, we use the lifelong game of golf as the vehicle to seamlessly teach kids essential life skills and core values so they can become the best versions of themselves. Golf, with the help of First Tee, opens many doors for our inner city kids. Skills, fun, personal development, jobs, internships, scholarships, networking, mentors, time off electronics, exercise, and a game to play with friends and family for their entire lifetimes. And that list goes on. First Tee runs two of the city's golf courses because over 10 years ago, Walnut Lane had no management company interested in bidding to run the course because it was a perpetual financial loser. First Tee ran programs at Walnut Lane and stepped in so that our kids were not abandoned. Similar to John F. Byrne Golf Club, Walnut Lane had been neglected, but First Tee invested to make it a viable entity for our students and public golfers. With over $1.2 million investment and a little more to go, Walnut Lane turned back into a community asset, a stage for First Tee kids to develop, and a business which was not a burden on our nonprofit organization. When John Byrne Golf Club was on the verge of closing permanently in 2019, and at the suggestion of Parks and Recreation, First Tee moved forward to bid to run the course. Reluctant at first, but eager now, we are excited for the future. We see this as the perfect partnership for the city of Philadelphia. One less property to manage, it is in good hands with a caring steward. We have raised over $1.5 million to renovate the clubhouse, make ADA accessible, add a student classroom, and repair the golf course. In a little over a year with a small $200,000 investment and by employing local Philadelphians who personally care about the facility, there could not be more positivity and excitement from residents. Lastly, golf has been considered by many the sport of the elite and well-to-do. First, he counters that notion because our golf courses are for everybody, and we sit with welcoming arms. We charge low rates, help aspiring golfers learn, are friendly, and are a model in diversity. With Discord across the country, one thing our organization and supporters are certain is that an investment in our kids is one nobody disagrees with. John Byrne gives First Tee another springboard for our students to fully develop their potential. And the opportunity also provides a place where many Philadelphia golfers and non-golfers can enjoy the stunning natural beauty the course offers. Thank you for considering First Tee to have a long-term lease to run the John F. Byrne Golf Club. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, Commissioner. We're going to hold questions to the end. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilman Curtis Jones uh, has a question. I see your hand is raised. And I know you have to drop off. So I, if you have a question, you're on mute. You're muted. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to sure. go on the record and say um, that what the testimony you just heard is true. Um, Walnut Lane uh, was on the verge of becoming a nine-hole golf course as opposed to a full golf course uh, when they stepped in and, and really breathed life back into that course. It is an asset uh, to the city, uh, but also to the immediate community uh, in the Roxborough area where people get to enjoy outdoor golfing. Personally, um, when I first got elected, I didn't consider golf a sport. People dress too nice for that to be a true sport. Uh, but I quickly found out uh, that it was because I assaulted the grass on that court, divots the size of craters, 
uh, were created by me. But it, but with a little bit of tender, loving instruction by our Walnut Lane, I can actually hit a golf ball a little better. And I bought a bunch of used clubs right out of the center. Uh, and I enjoy uh, the park more because of that experience. So anyone, any citizen that gets an opportunity to experience that kind of um, exercise outdoor uh, experiences, it is, it is an asset to Parks and Rec. It is an asset to our city. And thank you for allowing me to say what I had to say, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for the validation of the programs that, um, you know, we work so hard to get into the neighborhoods to make sure that uh, kids have access to. So uh, I'm glad to see that, uh, you know, the program is uh, here and uh, I'm glad to see that your golf game is hopefully going to get better. Going to get better. I, I didn't promise that, Madam Chair. I just said I could hit a ball now. Golf is more than just hitting a ball. It sure is. It sure is. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're going to try to have the video now. So, uh, Lonnie, if you want to tee that up. Okay, can you see the screen? All right, let's Please see if you can go. hear it. Here we go. Uh, looks like we still don't have the sound. I have the opportunity to still don't have the sound. And has additional experiences with more around the world. Gianna, uh, thank you so much for letting us play here and for giving us new plans to make it better. Um, Lonnie? Hey, Lonnie, I think we gave it a good try. It just didn't work yeah. out. Okay. Yeah. I <laughs> I don't know if it's something that could be sent around individually to members, but that would be great if we can get it out to the committee, get the video out so they can take a look at it individually. We can do that. It's just a, it's a, a YouTube 60 second video. Oh, so we send oh the link great. Back. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, Commissioner, would you like to state your name for the record, record and proceed with your testimony? Thanks. Thank you. Good morning, Chairperson Bass and members of the Committee on Parks and Recreation and Cultural Affairs. My name is Catherine Ott Lovell. I'm the Commissioner for the Department of Parks and Recreation, and I'm here today to testify in support of Bill Number 200617, an ordinance or authorizing a 10 year conversion of the current term with up to two five year renewal terms of a lease agreement the city entered into with the first tee of Greater Philadelphia for the John F. Byrne Golf Course at 9550 Leon Street. First Tee of Greater Philadelphia was the successful bidder on a September 6, 2019 request for proposals for the operation management and maintenance of the John F. Byrne Golf Course. The city, acting through the Department of Parks and Recreation, entered into a one-year lease with up to three one-year renewal terms on August 14, 2020. In order to capitalize and secure $600,000 in initial capital improvements to the golf course, First Tee has requested a conversion of the lease as provided for in the RFP to the longer term 10 years with up to two five year renewals. This long term lease will allow First Tee to expeditiously proceed with the initial planned capital improvements for the course, including ADA upgrades, sand trap rebuilds, equipment purchases, course irrigation installation, and cart path repairs. First Tee has already made significant clubhouse roof and window repairs, as well as course bridge renovations. First Tee estimates that their total capital spending over the next three to four years could exceed $1.5 to $2 million and is aggressively raising the necessary funding. The operating and capital outlay by First Tee will, will assure adequate upkeep of a valued municipal golf course that was in serious need of upgrade and renewed on-site management. 
First Tee's exemplary track record over the past 11 years managing Walnut Lane Golf Course is a clear example of the commitment, fundraising capability, and community service that First Tee brings to this management model. In First Tee's initial year of 2020, during a pandemic, it increased the previous year's golf rounds played from 10,000 to over 26,000 rounds. In addition, First Tee held robust league play and perhaps most importantly, 2,000 children played golf at Bern at no cost whatsoever to their families. First Tee teaches life skills by teaching golf to children throughout the city, regardless of their background, their ability, or their past experience. All that First Tee requires is that a child has a desire or interest to learn and play golf. As Bill Hyman stated, 55% of all First T students come from an ethnically diverse background and 40% are female. First T's commitment as a nonprofit organization to the city's children and its ability to fundraise is a combination that will ensure the long-term success of the Burn Golf Course. First T has proven at Walnut Lane Golf Course that it can take over management of a municipal golf course and make that course work for all parties involved, the city, the neighborhood, the children, visitors, and staff, all at no direct cost to taxpayers. Parks and Rec respects, respectfully ask for the opportunity to permit First Tee to extend its already successful track record and burn over the next 10 years. For that reason, we support this legislation and I respectfully request this committee approve bill number 200617. I'm also requesting a suspension of the rules so as to allow for first reading at the next session of council. Thank you and we'll be glad to answer any additional questions you may have. Thank you both for your testimony. Quick question. Can you speak to diversity in terms of the numbers of children uh, that are uh, served? What is the diversity among the uh, the youth that are served by First Tee and also among instruction? I know that they don't really do a brick and mortar sort of, um, you know, operation or the maintenance or anything like that for the fields. But can you talk about maybe the instructional staff and what that looks like uh, uh, for First Tee? Uh, yes, Councilwoman Bass. Uh, our first T instructional staff, um, we have 30 uh, part-time and full-time paid coaches. Uh, approximately 50% of that staff is African-American. Um, I will also note 40% uh, are female. Um, and we have uh, some former students um, that are part of um, our instructional staff. Um, you know, we think it's very important for our staff to mirror um, our target population. Um, mm -hmm. We um, you know, are working on increasing, uh, oh, let me just go over uh, participant uh, numbers. Um, of, the, of the diverse students, 70% um, are African-American, 20% uh, are Hispanic. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, we're, we're working to um, add programs at, at other facilities like Juniata to uh, where there is a uh, Hispanic population. Um, and that's also important for us in our in our schools, um, in the 38 schools that we're affiliated with. Um, we have our programs either in that school, uh, part of a middle school's golf team or a high school golf team. Um, we're part of some gym classes. Um, and for any of the council people on this call, we're, we're always available to expand our programs into schools that may be in your district. Uh, and then what we do is after the introduction of, of those programs, if it's part of a gym class, um, those, um, some of those schools will participate at field trips um, to the golf courses. Okay, very good, very good. It sounds uh, uh, like it's quite diverse and uh, really um, that the, um, the young people who are in First Tee can see a connection between themselves and the instructors which I think is very important. Yes. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Councilman Brooks, Chair recognizes Councilman Brooks for a question, followed by Councilwoman Jamie Gauthier. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have a question about uh, First Team employees. I'm, I'm glad you gave us the demographics, but do they live in Philadelphia? Are they uh, the percentage, the, I think you said 30, 30 part-time and full-time coaches, are they Philadelphia residents? So, um, you know, I don't have the specific number. Um, probably 60% of our coaching staff live in Philadelphia. Um, our organization, our reach is greater Philadelphia. So we also have programs in Camden and the surrounding suburbs of Philadelphia. 
Um, but we've got, I'll tell you what, it's, if you go to our website, you can look at our, our coaches. We have, um, you know, a former, uh, NFL football player. He coaches in Camden for us. We have a former major league baseball player. We have a Philadelphia police officer. We've got multiple Philadelphia school teachers. We have financial advisors. Um, it's, it's really a great group of coaches, um, that serve as mentors for our kids. Um, and it's been a, a drive of ours to, um, you know, just continue to, um, you know, find coaches specifically with diverse backgrounds because that's what the majority of our population is that we're serving. That's really, you know, I'm really excited to hear that. My undergrad degree is in therapeutic recreation. So, um, Catherine, we've had an extensive conversation about my uh, love for, you know, sports and recreation, even though I don't play as many sports as I would like to. Um, but, you know, working in that field, my next question is related to um, wages. Do you know what the lowest paid employees make at your organization? Uh, so here? the the lowest wage, um, you know, some of our coaches that are in high school uh, would start out at, at $10 an hour. Um, most of the coaches once uh, or all coaches, once they complete what we call level one training, go to $15 an hour. And then um, the wages go up to $50 an hour. That's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, and, and one of the things that we're working on, too, because it's been a great development of our program staff, um, this, who has hired some of our students and some of our students have become coaches that are high schoolers. Uh, we're starting some financial literacy classes. So we're going to offer those to, to our students who we're also helping get jobs. Some of the kids uh, graduated from a caddy academy and then we've helped them get jobs at local golf courses. Uh, the kids that are working for us were working on the financial liter literacy classes that we are also going to offer to uh, our parents. And, and one of the neat things with the pandemic, one of the silver linings is, um, you know, when we would try to do meetings um, and put a lot of effort into having a meeting and, and ask for parents and kids to come out at night, um, you'd have very low attendance. And now with Zoom, um, you know, or Microsoft Teams, we can, you know, reach a lot of our students and parents and get a lot of participation. So I think the financial literacy and, and other educational aspects are have been, you know, will be very successful for us. That's really good to hear. I'm really excited to hear about that. And my final question is how do you partner with schools? Do you seek out partnerships or do the schools reach out to you directly? And if they reach out to you directly, I would like a little bit more information about that. And I definitely would love to come to a tour um, of the course because I drive past there all the time and I always wonder, you know, what it looked like on the other side of the gate. Yeah, you certainly need to see it on the other side of the fence. Um, and I would encourage you, you have to come see a class, come see the kids. Um, you have to see, and, and I want to reiterate, you know, we, we are not a golf organization. We are a youth development organization. So we are teaching kids essential life skills. And it's just amazing how they learn many of these life skills seamlessly. They have no idea that they're working on their interpersonal skills or they're gaining their confidence. And, you know, they're speaking in front of the class and, you know, telling something about their partner and, you know, and, you know, from an early age of, you know, age five, um, you know, they are developing, you know, great skills. Um, and I forget your question, the main question. Um, how do you partner with schools and do the schools need to proactively reach out to you? So I think it, it really is, is a combination. Um, a lot of times it's word of mouth. Sometimes it's a student that's in a program. They introduce us to their school. Um, we have grants available, so we won't charge any school for a program. We have a specific school for uh, a specific program for elementary schools uh, where it's part of their gym class. And it and actually goes up to middle schools where there's plastic golf clubs and tennis balls. And, you know, it's a lot of fun, but we incorporate, you know, learning about our core values like judgment. And you talk about using judgment in your daily life and then you're using judgment, how you hit a golf shot. And that's how we kind of correlate golf. And the, the key is to have with the kids to have fun so they get hooked on golf and then when they became teenagers um they'll want to continue participation um so it's word of mouth um but it's what's most important is that there's an advocate at the school and i think you know there's a misconception about golf um and so people aren't interested in it they think it's too expensive you know our two golf courses in philadelphia are extremely affordable for kids they're free um you know people that have trouble, uh, you know, paying for clubs, you know, a lot of times we'll give them clubs. So, um, you know, we're, we're working on, 
um, you know, that accessibility aspect. And we just want to be able to spread the word uh, so that our kids um, that see it in the gym class can come and participate, you know, at the golf course. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Chair. Recognizes nice. Councilwoman Garthier. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good morning to the panel. Um, I love the work that uh, First Tee is doing, and it seems like you had a great partnership with the city. Um, I, I was looking at some of the EOP goals for the contract around um, capital improvements, um, operations and maintenance and concessions. And I just wanted to hear you talk more about those goals and how they were um, decided or agreed upon. Well, First Tee will make every effort that we can to reach the minority business and women business enterprise goals that, that are in our contracts. Um, and one of the things that we, we will do, um, because the majority of our um, capital spend will occur, you know, hopefully in, in this near future, um, where we'll spend, you know, well over a million dollars, um, you know, we're going to be posting uh, notifications, um, you know, it, within our clubhouse for all of our golfers to see um, that may have a MBE or WBE business um, to help with um, you know, some of the needs that we're going to have at, at our two golf courses, um, you know, going forward. Uh, but they're important to us. Um, and, you know, we realize, you know, it's so important to be all about community. And that's why, you know, at, at John Byrne, 95% um, of the employees live in Philadelphia. 95% of them live within three miles of our golf course. Um, and so if we can do business with local community members, um, it just ends up being such a great partnership. Yeah, and, and maybe can, can Parks and Rec speak to how the goals in the contract were decided upon? Sure. Hi, Councilwoman. Um, so um, the Office of Economic Opportunity OEO um, helps to set those goals for us. So my understanding is that they do a, a scan of, you know, sort of the um, potential vendors and, and opportunities that may exist um, after talking to us and First Tee about their their um, operations and understanding where their spends will be. You know, they then do a scan to help determine, um, you know, um, the feasibility uh, of, of those, uh, you know, of, of working with potential MBE, WBE vendors and then set the ranges based on that. So, but they, they help to set the ranges um, and then um, ultimately approve them as well. Thank you. I don't have any more questions. Hi, this is Sabrina. Councilwoman's uh, trying to get back on. I'm back. <laughs> Please accept my uh, apologies. Uh, all the fun of virtual hearings. Um, Councilwoman McGothy, I do apologize. I missed your questions. Uh, were you were you done? Were you complete? Did you have additional questions? I'm done. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Were there any? Was there anyone else to testify here today? Okay, seeing that there was no one else to testify. Any additional questions from members of council? Okay, seeing that there are none. Um, this is going to conclude the hearing and we're going to go into the public meeting at this point. There being no further questions from members of the committee and no other witnesses to testify. Um, and I've asked if there's anyone else present in this hearing whose name we failed to call and that wishes to offer their testimony. Um, please be, uh, feel free to speak at this point. And uh, hearing none, I want to thank all the panels and witnesses for their participation today, and we value your opinions. I now invite all panels and witnesses to please disconnect from the meeting before we go into our public meeting. We will now pause the proceedings briefly as multiple participants leave the hearing. For the members of, uh, uh, for the witnesses, we ask you to, to uh, disconnect from the hearing.
This concludes the hearing of the Committee on the Public uh, public uh, Parks and Recreation. We will now go into a public meeting to consider the action to be taken on the bill before this committee today. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll to establish a quorum? Council Member Gauthier. Present. Council Member Quinona Sanchez. Council Member Johnson. Council Member Thomas. Council Member Thomas. Council Member Jones. Council Member Brooks. Present. Uh, Chair Bass, I believe we need one we need more council yes, member. We need one more member. Uh, so we're going to pause for just a moment while we uh, get one more member for our quorum. I do see that Council Member Thomas was on the line, so I'm not sure if he's having technical difficulties, but uh, we will pause the proceedings until we get uh, a quorum. Madam Clerk, if you could uh, reach out uh, to the members of the committee who are um, not on and Let's try to get them one. I can give them a, a quick call. Okay, thank you. Council member Thomas is going to jump back on. Okay. Okay, we're still waiting for a quorum. Um, I think Council Member Thomas is here now. Council Member Thomas, are you here? I'm present. I'm positive. Okay, very good. Thank you. Madam Clerk, can we go through the roll call one more time? Just to establish a quorum. Yes. Uh, Council Member Gauthier. Present. Council Member Quinona Sanchez. Councilmember Johnson, Councilmember Thomas, <laughs> Councilmember Thomas, Councilmember Jones, Councilmember Brooks, here, Chair Bass. I'm here. Um, so, uh, Council Member Thomas. Hold on, let me see if we can get him again. Councilwoman Gauthier. He had technological um, issues. He's he's getting on on a different device. Okay, very good. We'll wait. Just let us know when he's on. If you could just let us know when he's when he logs back on.
I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Um, we can hear, we can hear you now. We're going to, you know what? We're going to give it one quick second. Councilwoman Sanchez is also getting on. I apologize. Councilman. No, no, no. no. It's, it's happening today. It's one of those days. Uh, and Councilwoman Sanchez is also joining us. So we'll give her a quick second. My apologies, we'll... Madam Chair. I'm not, here. Not, not a problem. It's one of those days we're having technical difficulties all over the place. Bad, Madam Clerk, can you roll through, go through a roll call again so we can establish quorum? Councilmember Gauthier. Present. Councilmember Quinona Sanchez. Present. Councilmember Johnson. Councilmember Thomas. Present. Sorry, present. Councilmember Jones. Councilmember Brooks. Present. And Chair Bass. Present. Okay, very good. We have established a quorum. And uh, the chair recognizes Councilman Gauthier for a motion on bill number 200617. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I move that bill number 200617 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit the first reading of this bill at our next session of council. Let me get a second. Second. Okay, Councilwoman, for the uh, for the record, Councilwoman Maria Quinones Sanchez offered the second. The chair, uh, well, it has been moved and prop. It has been <laughs> moved and probably seconded that Bill Number Two Zero Zero Six One Seven be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All of those in favor of this motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, the ayes have it and the motion carries. This concludes the meeting of the business before the committee on parks, recreation, and cultural affairs. We want to thank everyone for attending and we appreciate your support and service. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Everyone. Have a great day.